Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at a new wing flight controller from HDLRC. And this is called the HDLRC F4 F wing flight controller. Now for the flight controller itself, it's a 20 by 20 type stack. However, obviously, as you can tell, it is quite long. And this is the type of format that wing flight controllers are starting to take now. And uh, at first it started with Matic and now we have HDLRC here on the table. And uh, what this has, it basically has everything you need. It has a six volt regulator. It's using six volts for the servo. So keep that in mind. It has a five volt regulator for everything that you need to power up and a small 3.3 .3 volt regulator, which usually powers up most of the components such as the microcontroller unit, but it also is broken out if you had some sort of a spectrum receiver. Now let's get into the connection. It's pretty well labeled, but not well labeled. I mean, you're gonna need to take a look at the top board here in order to know what these are for over here because it doesn't tell you which one is battery, which one's ESC, and it's really important you get that right so you can watch the current. So the current will be correct in the OSD if you're using the current. Now, as you can tell, it takes two to eight S LiPo, which, and we do have a TVS diode here. This kind of acts, it just suppresses very high voltage spikes, and it's really nice to have on anything, either an ESC or as well as flight controllers, all-in-one flight controllers, such as this one here. So it does somewhat protect the components. Now, they've actually made it pretty simple to connect. You don't need to go a million different places to connect, for example, a receiver. Now, if we wanted to connect our receiver right here, what you'd want to do is you want to put, this is a very important now, if you have S bus or I bus, if you have S bus, you're going to want to put it right there, which is really important, your signal. And you get five volt from this and ground from here. And the reason why you'd give five volt to the receiver from here is that so the receiver can power up when you plug in the USB, so keep that in mind. If you wanted a smart port, they're saying to connect it here. I don't know if it has some sort of an inverter, but TX1 probably has some sort of inversion going on for it, so smart port would go right next to your signal. That's if you're using SBUS. If you're using IBUS or anything else, then you'd want to connect it to RX1 right here. That's where your signal would go. And again, your five volt and your ground, that's where they would go. And now if we move down here, we have a TX5 pad. You can use that for anything you want. And an RSSI pad. So this is a dedicated RSSI pad. If you have some sort of a receiver that has a separate signal for RSSI, you can go ahead and connect that right there. Now, if we move to this pad right here, which is above, for example, the IBUS, this is a 3.3 volt pad. Um, not everybody will use this, but if you're using Spectrum, I think Spectrum uses 3.3 volts. That's where you'd want to put that there. And this should power off of USB, by the way, because um, the flight controller powers off by the USB and there's only one 3.3 volt regulator. And here's the ground. So if you need the ground for anything. Next, we have our servos, which is servo six, five, four, and three. Uh, they've gone backwards for some reason. And servo six, this would be the signal, the six volt and ground. And then servo five, same thing, same thing, and up to servo three. Next here, we have some more peripherals. For example, if you wanted to connect a buzzer, you would put the ground of the buzzer here and you would put the positive right there. Now, if you wanted to connect your VTX, this is really nice that they've thought this through, is you would have your VTX signal here, your battery here, your ground and smart audio. So if you have smart audio, it's really nice. Camera is right below it. So cam, five volt and ground beautiful and then LED 5 volt and ground LED is the signal which will control your LEDs so keep that in mind now let's go ahead and move up here for example let's say we're using one ESC so this this our, our ceiling has one motor then we would give the power from here to the ESC and the signal would go to S1 that would be for signal one which is going to be for motor one now if you have two of them then you do the same thing so motor one would go here or the ESC is positive and negative would go here and then the signal would go to S1 now if you had the another ESC in a motor then it would go the, the power would go here to the ESC and then we have our signal which is right there for the second one now what's also really nice here is they also provide us with an RX4 pad they actually give us two of these so that's if you both of your ESCs have some sort of uh, ESC telemetry you can go ahead and install them in RX4. They've broken out two pads for you, which is really nice and very well thought through. And in here, they also gave us two duplicated um, pads for LEDs if you ever wanted to. Signal of LED, 5 volt and ground. And I don't think they're separate. They're all connected basically together. So that same signal would do that. But maybe it just makes it a little bit easier for you to route. So it's a nice addition if you will be using that. And as you can tell here, we do have a barometer, which is really nice. And we do have an OSD back here. Now let's get to the good stuff. Now let's just say you didn't want to use the pin headers here for the servos. I really love this cable right here. And what that where that goes is it goes under the USB. This is very important because there's two of them and you could just basically 
put it in somewhere and probably screw something up. So you would want to put this under the uh, USB part, the connector that's under the USB. And now you have all your servos broken out into already made wires if you didn't want to you know, solder them on or anything. So this is a really nice addition. It could be very useful in specific builds. And I will be using it for my build, which I think I'm building the King Kong, which will be upcoming very soon on the channel since the weather is sort of kind of starting to clear up, but still hasn't. And here we have more broken out pads, for example, the I squared C protocol and just another five volt and like TX3 and stuff. It's there in the documentation. It's not really that important here. So overall, it's a really nice package here. I don't know its current cost. And uh, we're going to be testing this out very soon on the channel. So that's really going to conclude it for this board, guys. Very simple board, really nice design. We're going to be putting this on a build very soon. It's going to be a King Kong build, I think, or the LDARC wing. It's like a 800 millimeter wing. And uh, we'll see how well it flies. And well, that's it, guys. I'll have everything linked down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.